Have you ever wondered how an empire as big as Rome fell? How something as massive an influence as Compaq is no longer with us today? Well, today we're talking about change, both for good and for bad. Change is a powerful thing. It presides over all things around us. And as time's little brother, things rise and fall with the waves of change. See, when Blizzard rose to popularity back in the 90s, it was during a time of change, a transition to when gaming was becoming less of a nerdy pastime and more of a welcomed hobby. When Orcs and Humans launched in, Orcs vs. Humans launched in 1994, Blizzard had their first real franchise on their hands, guys, and they were financially secure for the first time in their entire existence. It's hard to imagine Blizzard, a company as big as it is, as profitable as it is, was at one point financially insecure. But it was an empowering feeling for them. It was a major win. They were so excited and so stoked. And that really catapulted them to where we are today. As the industry rode those waves of change, there would be a few more additions to the Blizzard library. StarCraft, Warcraft 2, 3, Diablo 1 and 2. These titles were adding to Blizzard's image, deepening their potential as a long-standing company that makes quality games. But their truly monumental success came in 2004 when those winds of change blew once again with World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft was not the first MMO, okay? Don't listen to what Trade Chat tells you. EverQuest was the first 3D MMO. You can look up the first M actual MMO. Get out there on Google. I know there's some other ones out there. I hear you guys. I know, I get it. But what made World of Warcraft so successful is something that Blizzard has done for years, guys, for years. It's always been their secret sauce, their recipe. They simply take an idea and polish it over and over and over and over like coal to a diamond until it's easily accessible. It's understandable. Anyone can play it. You can pick it up and have a good time. That's their game. Make games fun. That's, that's it. Very, such a simple thing. And at some point in your life, you've probably heard the term Blizzard Polish or Blizzard Quality. This is their legacy. The games are great, but at some point, if another company had developed those games without that same polish, they probably wouldn't be the success they are today. So why am I telling you this? Why? What, what's, what's with the history lesson? Well, because that Blizzard is most likely gone, guys. Most likely gone. I guarantee you... They're really not going to be around in the next few years. Not Blizzard in general, but the Blizzard we know. The Diablo 1 and 2, the World of Warcraft, the Warcraft, the Starcraft Blizzard that we know and love is gone. Dust in the wind, along with their innovative ideas, their creative energy, and that Blizzard quality that we love. But like all great empires, their downfall has been a slow and painful one. With Blizzard, it all began in 2008 when their holding company, Vivendi Games, merged with Activision. In 2013, the newly named Activision Blizzard actually announced they're going to buy out Vivendi and entered 2014 as a brand new entity, ready to make some games. Their actually first game that year was uh, Destiny, who was it was a major success until it wasn't. But that's another it's another subject. We'll, we'll get on that one later. But now that you know the history. Now that you know the history, we can focus on the present and the extremely rough currents of change that we're rafting through. So you guys better get your life vests on because we're about to go through some stuff. 2018 has been a rough year for Activision Blizzard, with stocks falling nearly 50% since October. October. It's December. Guys, that's insane. We're starting to see how that company has been handling the news and is not well. Organizational shifts have been happening throughout both those companies, and they've been flip-flopping personnel back and forth to help optimize that sort of profit gain. Namely, we saw Blizzard's former CFO vacate his position and move to a COO position. Then the CFO vacancy was then filled with an Activision CFO by the name of Amrita Ahuya, and the two of them went on a hiring spree to bring in like-minded people. Now here's the issue. Those like-minded people were both brought in from Activision and a consulting company known as McKinsey. In my world, I have to deal with consulting companies, right? I've had to deal with them for a while in the IT world. There's one thing I know about consulting companies. They care about one thing, one thing and one thing only, and that is money. It's profits. That is the bottom line, guys. That is pushing into the black and staying out of the red. That's not good. It's not good. If these people are at the helm, with Mike Morheim out, we're depending on J. Allen Brock to withhold the traditions of Blizzard, to uphold 
what Blizzard was. And I just don't see that happening. I don't. I don't see that happening. I feel like he's going to cave. And I, uh, I'm i so kind of disappointed with that. But with the passing of the guard, we're starting to feel those repercussions, guys. The new captains at the helm are making some decisions. They have placed a new emphasis on cost reduction. They've increased the rate of game development, which is positive. But this has been showcased as Blizzard expanded their career crossroads program. Now this program was, it's been around for a while, it's originally targeted veterans, but it's a severance package, right? Built for Blizzard folk. And on paper, it sounds great. What it's supposed to do is, if you're a veteran in Blizzard and you're stuck and you wanna go somewhere else, then this is supposed to be your go back to school fund, your go do whatever you wanna do fund, go out there and you know get into an industry you wanna do. And great, that's fantastic. They've recently expanded this to include multiple departments and they've lowered the cost of entry. So now you have people who have been there for a couple of years that are able to capitalize on this and leave. What does that say to me? That says we are cutting down, we are trimming the fat and we are getting down to a lean operating model, which is great, but do not cut too far. If you cut to the bone, we're gonna start to see some major issues, major issues. And this is me speaking from experience with some things that I've been through. We're already starting to see this a little bit. In Ireland, there were over 100 individuals that left the customer service industry, that tower within Blizzard. They left, they took that Crossroads program and they moved on. A hundred, over a hundred people from one location is insane, guys. And we're starting to see and starting to hear some things that are coming out of that. Some former employees have said, quote, over the course of the last year, Blizzard has been trying very actively to find creative ways to cut costs that will not draw negative press attention. Mmm, that sounds, mm, that sounds like Activision. That's... That is not the blizzard that I know. That is not the Mike Morheim blizzard that I know. And I'm really starting to really starting to doubt this whole thing. So as we know, guys, the pieces are starting to come together. Let's take a jump back to the 2018 BlizzCon. The general reception around this year's event was lukewarm at best. At absolute best. At tippity top at best, it's lukewarm. And that is not good compared to all the other BlizzCons we've had, right? From the lacking goodie bags to the underwhelming announcements, none, none more disappointing than Diablo Immortal, to which Blizzard had been fueling and fanning those flames as Diablo 4 up until the week before the reveal. And you couple that with the World of Warcraft demo that we had, which was lacking detail and substance literally up until the day before, that's a problem. It ended up launching with a timer and with an extremely small subset of things that you could do. This is not the blizzard we know. This is a move that I even found disappointing. I feel so bad for the fans who traveled there, the ones that have been there for the first time. They're so excited. I finally get to go to BlizzCon. I, I sat there. I waited for a ticket. I bought it. I paid for the plane ticket. I paid for hotel. I went there so excited only to leave with disappointment only to attend one of the worst BlizzCons that I've personally seen. It's awful. You could tell this event was purely there to drum up ticket sales and sad, very sad. Fast forward to a month ago and we have the next move from the Masters of Profit, Activision, the sudden shuttering of Heroes of the Storms Esports League and the Heroes of the Dorm program. This was such an abrupt end to the series and for some to their careers. There's announcers, streamers, people, pros that have put so much blood and sweat and tears in this game and to be shut off by an announcement done by a blog post with no communication to them. These individuals that had helped build that series, helped build that game, ugh, that makes no sense to me and it doesn't bode well. They'd stood next to him during the tribulations and I understand that Heroes of the Storm wasn't a big game comparatively. Well, comparatively it was, but I'm saying compared to, you know, Dota 2 or League of Legends, it wasn't, you know, a monumental success in Blizzard's eyes. But if you compare it to some of the other games in the industry, they were doing quite well. Quite well. And they moved a lot of those developers into other projects. They moved them off of Heroes of the Storm. So I'm, I don't, 
want to say this, but I can see 2020 being the final year for Heroes of the Storm. And I don't want it to be. I love that game. You know, I'm not a big MOBA guy, but Heroes of the Storm was nice. I understood, I knew the characters. I had a connection with the characters as a Blizzard person. And as somebody who isn't a big fan of MOBAs, it was easy enough that I could get into it, but also challenging enough that I could play it and see myself getting better. So seeing the really kind of them sticking a fork in it is kind of disappointing, super disappointing actually. And for all these uh, individuals out there that major living off of Heroes of the Storm or anything like that, I feel for you, super sorry. I, I, I wish there was anything I could do. But the thing is guys, we're seeing that influence of their new folks on the bottom line. All of these things, right? They're starting to add up and people are starting to get a little disappointed. And the thing is, there is a little silver lining, I'll say, maybe, I'm, I'm going to say a tarnished silver lining, that these changes might not be all so sour. We're seeing a rejuvenated view on releasing games faster, which can be a blessing and a curse, I understand. You know, Blizzard's career page is full, full to the brim with developer positions searching for that perfect fit to help drive those franchises forward. Hopefully, we'll see them sooner than the typical 10-year Blizzard slow cook, but here's the issue, with all recipes comes a chance to burn and misfire. And with an expedited development cycle, we might not get that blizzard polish that we're so used to seeing on most things. I'm gonna end this thing with Steve Jobs. This is something I saw on Reddit and I think it fits extremely well. Steve Jobs, the, the brainchild behind Apple, not gonna forget you was, I got you, but he said it best, companies who control the major market share fail miserably. They push out their product people, the people that made their company different and unique, and they usher in the marketing and sales teams to push those products. He compared Pepsi to Xerox and IBM, and these companies all made their monopolies from innovative ideas, next generation thinking, and wonderful products. And it, it, it it improved the business world. Pepsi improved obviously the soda world, but IBM and Xerox, the business world. And once they're at the top though, they had no competition. And if you're someone who made products like a new printer, a new bottle, a new computer, who cares? In their mind, who cares? We're already at the top. It doesn't matter. No one's gonna catch us. We're the rabbit, they're the turtle, that's it. And if they're already number one, then what matters most? And that thing that matters most is getting those products into people's hands as quickly and as many as possible. And the problem becomes those marketing and salespeople, the individuals, not trying to generalize, but the individuals who didn't create those innovative ideas, they weren't you know, geniuses in their own right, and they weren't creative, end up running the company. And if you have somebody running the company that's not necessarily bought in to the products you sell, they just know how to you know, uh, push products, then you're left with a shell. All the genius has died. One that has been carved clean of innovative ideas, products, and the magic that made that company so successful in the way it was. And with all that gone, the business fails and fades away. Just like IBM, just like Pepsi, just like Xerox back in the day. You have to keep product people at the helm. So as we round off 2018, and we move into the new era of Activision Blizzard, I gotta say, I'm both excited, guys, and terrified for the new future. I'm hoping, I'm uh, so I'm always a glass half full person, so I'm really looking at this as a glass half full, but it's becoming more and more difficult to swallow that, and I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know, guys, I don't know if Blizzard's gonna be able to weather the winds of change as they rode so well in the past. And, I mean, will the prioritization of profit be the tsunami that finally capsizes the masters of polish and quality? I'm not sure. But I want to hear from you guys. What? Let's talk about this topic as a whole. I'm not going to give you guys any food for thought. I just want to know what your thoughts and concerns are for Blizzard going into the new year. This has been Vulcan, guys, and I am out of here.